Hello everybody. Welcome back to my educational channel Edis English Literature. I am Ardhan Dude. Today we are going to understand the tragic hero. We will analyze its characteristics particularly defining two words Hamartia and Hubris that Aristotle mentions in his Poetics. In fact there are several lectures on this topic you can also pop up there and try to understand its full meaning. First of all, why tragic hero is so important in tragedy? The hero is of overwhelming importance in most literary works. But in no other form of literature is he as important as in tragedy. This is because while most literary forms such as for example novel, short story or comedy are concerned with host of characters, but in tragedy the entire attention of the audience is focused upon a single character, the protagonist. This is also the reason why most of the tragedies, as you all know, uh, by the very names of the protagonist. Examples, uh, for example, you can have Sobocles, Oedipus Rex, Euripides, Hippolytus, Shakespeare's Macbeth, Marlowe's Dr. Foster. These are famous tragedies by the name of their lead character. So when we are discussing tragedy, the discussion of the tragic hero is obvious. Aristotle's concept as laid down in his poetics is of such fundamental insights that it is of abiding importance ever for us and from that ideology we can get the comprehension of the tragic hero or his ideology or definitions of the tragic hero. So if we mention the categorical analysis of the Aristotelian view, you can get the full understanding of the tragic hero or Aristotelian definition of the tragic hero. Searching for a viable tragic hero, Aristotle begins with a series of negatives. You know, he selects different categories of people and negates one after another until the right choice. So it's a negativity theory or rather negation theory. According to him, a good man must not be seen passing from happiness to misery. Number one, the faultless hero reeling under the blows of fate arouses our indignation rather than the tragic emotions of pity and fear. So if a good man passes from happiness to misery, that is not poetic justice. So it's a gross violation of the social norms as well as ethical norms. So it is being rejected. Second case of the bad man falling from happiness into misery uh, can be called a kind of a celebration rather than the tragic emotions. Because we will rejoice at the sight of the criminal suffering his due punishment. So a bad people punished is a kind of a releasing one, but that's not arresting pity and fear that Aristotle technically tells about. So the only other option, the third possibility that he defines that the bad man might be seen to become prosperous, but this is certainly the most untragic because there is no tragedy available or possible there. So Aristotle finds the ideal tragic hero to be an intermediate kind of personage, a man not preeminently virtuous and just, whose misfortune however is brought upon him not by vice and depravity, but by some error of judgment, you know. The error of judgment, the kind of person he chooses as a tragic hero must have some fatal error in his judging the life, in his judging the very aspects of his philosophical way of uh, or the outlook of things. And that very error of judgment, ultimately he is a good person, but that error of judgment drags him down from happiness into misery.
the phrase error of judgment has been a source of great confusion because it has been translated from greek into english from the source literature it means the greek word it means uh, the very word is hamartia it may be a kind of a moral flaw actually hamartia is a term taken from archery which means the missing of the mark by the archer since the missing of the mark is, is not itself a culpable act and often proceeds from chance you would argue that the hero is not himself guilty but others would argue that it may also result from aptitude that this would amount to a flaw on the part of the protagonist even if not a moral flaw so the argument is that if you miss a mark whose fault is it is it uh, the very fate that you fall you miss the mark there might be some wins there might be some uh, miscalculations from your end so if there is fate then the error is not yours but if you are misjudging you if you are not concentrating enough and missing the mark then the moral flaw is yours so here the hamartia or the error of judgment from uh, the character it can be spread out into the fate or nemesis part also so hamartia the very definition of the hamartia can be an extended one the moral flaw that uh, the character exhibits can be hamartia or even a sum total of his into that gamut of or the, into that atmosphere of his life where he proceeds to that action is itself the error of judgment so to extend our argument we can say as aristotle propounds his theory yeah, tragedy may proceed from an accidental error an error that may proceed from a chance event for which the protagonist is in no way responsible for example is that the hero in sophocles oedipus who he has been banished from the home in his infancy and brought up by foster parents in a distant land he accidentally meets his actual father whom he does not know uh, in a distant land enters into a fight with him and kills him for his arrogance later he rides a country of its plug and is rewarded with marriage to its queen which or whom he does not know to be his own mother so it's all fate that he comes to know of this and blinds himself in the later stage in his case the accidental killing of his father marriage with his own mother therefore is not due to any moral flaw from the part of um, the protagonist rather it's all fate so where is the error of judgment but when we are taking other tragedies and judging them the responsibility or the faults of the protagonist is quite evident the example uh, is the responsibility in is king lear in which the fault of the king lies in his craving for flattery who bris or excessive pride is another quality of many tragic heroes and that quality is they are important in julius caesar it is the pride and that pride drags him down so error of judgment that is hamartia and the hubris the pride the pride is itself the quality that is interpolate or that has been imbibed with the spirit of error of judging Aristotle in fact defines or emphasizes the theory of tragic hero and the qualities of it and he uh, he make a poetic judgment out of who should prosper who should be rewarded and so on in the 20th century writers tragedies such as also these strike or scenes ride us to the sea the two notable example there are no such tragic hero that Aristotle has defined these are about simple people simple character and how they become universal and how they become sublime with the principle of being 
the universal human quality this universal human quality makes some tragic so while judging tragic hero aristotle's dictum or aristotle poetic analysis of all this sort can be taken in a broad perspective right for the greek tragedies and most of the elizabethan writings but when you are taking into the world literature there are such prominent tragedies where such tragic heroes are missing yet they are popular yet they are arresting yet they are arousing pity and fear but the theorem that aristotle propounds is quite common in maximum cases but not in the all of the cases so while judging at the tragic hero and its parameters when you are taking an error of judgments hubris and all such rhetorical phrases that you will find in aristotle's theorem you will have to judge it in your own way by the very by the very sphere of tragic drama by the very sphere of tragic action pity and fear and all such arguments in favor or against it this short analysis will help you to understand the tragic hero in in terms of hamarsi and hubris uh, the pity and fear theorem and all such theory that aristotle explained in his critical work poetics and if you have any questions regarding understanding this particular topic you can just pop up here and ask me question i will try my best to give an explanation so like share comment and don't forget to subscribe my channel bye bye